Hi guys, it's Chris here from Some Bloke Who Travels A Lot and today we are in Liverpool and we are not only staying at the Millennium Hard Day's Night Beatles Hotel, we are staying in the Paul McCartney Suite no less. Now, as you can imagine, the hotel is the Beatles. The Beatles are nothing but the Beatles. In fact, even when you take a, a trip to the little boys room, you're gonna see the Beatles. Obviously, not in the bathroom while you're in there. That would be like freaky. But it's safe to say, if you like the Beatles and you are visiting Liverpool, this is a must visit location. And you don't have to stay here. The first time I visited the Hard Day's Night Hotel, I was doing a Beatles walking tour, a free tour, which I'll be making a video soon about that and I'll put a link in the description in here, so depending on when you're watching, that will be there. And the Hard Day's Night is on that walking tour. Um, I came in for, I think I had a pot of tea actually, and uh, all this area that I'm showing you now is, is open to the public. These are the public rooms of the hotel. This is also the brasserie and the bar, and at the end of the video, I'll just briefly show you the menu and the steak I had. But we want to go up to the Paul McCartney suite. There is, of course, um, elevators, lifts, uh, as you would expect in a four-star hotel. However, I do recommend at least once in your stay to take a walk up the stairs as there are amazing photographs of the Beatles on every level as you take this curved staircase up to now, the Paul McCartney suite. The first thing that greets you in your hotel room is a suit of armour and a rather large portrait of Paul McCartney. The Paul McCartney portrait makes sense. I'm in the Paul McCartney suite at the Hard Day, Hard Day's Night, <laughs> Hard Day's Night Hotel. Okay, there you go. I'm being a bit dim today. So we have a full suite of armour. We, as I said, have the great man on the wall above us. I'm sure we're going to see quite a bit of him in a suite that is named after him. We have The Beatles, A Hard Day's Night. Now, I would imagine on that TV, I would probably be able to watch a Beatles film or two. Uh, but the first thing I'm actually going to do, give you a quick look at the room, uh, is I'm going to open these curtains. So I'm just going to pause the recording now. Open the curtains. Right, we're back. Slightly different room. <laughs> As you can see, the light coming through now. You've got this beautiful light and airy space. And what has to be the biggest uh, angle poise lamp I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, sizes and everything they say. Well, let's ask the other angle poise lamp what it thinks. Does it feel inferior next to its rather enormous big brother? Now that's a pretty cool chair. I'm liking that. Now if anyone spots anything in this room that is particularly relevant, we've already established I'm a bit dim today, as couldn't work out why there was a suit of armour in the room. Uh, please let me know in the comments below. So what have we got here? A special... At a special meeting of the Council of the City of Liverpool, held in the Council Chamber within the Town Hall on Wednesday the 7th of March 1984, present was the Chairman, Councillor Hugh Dalton, and a full Council. It was moved by Councillor J.D. Hamilton, seconded by Councillor Derek Hatton. Oh, Degsy. And resolved that in pursuance of the Local Government Act 1972, the honorary freedom of the City of Liverpool be confirmed upon Paul McCartney, MBE. In recognition of the eminent service rendered by him to the city as musician and composer, and in recognition of the worldwide acclaim of his musical talent. You can't get fairer than that, Mr. Derek Hatton. If you don't know who Derek Hatton is, just Google it. So, the long list of the great and the good that have been given the freedom of the city. 
So there they are, the four of them. George, John, Paul and Ringo. Now I'm not sure about this furniture. I love the chair. I really do love the chair. But uh, it's a slightly dated brown. And it's odd because the room doesn't feel dated. It does, especially with the curtains open now, it's fresh and airy. But we have a nice little bureau. I was looking for the power sockets earlier and definitely a day for being dim. The power sockets are there, so if you were plugging your laptop in and working from there for the day, that's where your power socket is. Because I found some very weird power sockets here. And this, I can't work out what this piece of furniture is for. Because we've got power sockets, we've got internet, but if you were to plug anything in and shut it, the cables wouldn't be able to come through. And if you plugged something in uh, and connected your phone, so I don't know. Do you think this was for a fax machine? Do you think being that it's the luxury suite when this was built, there was a fax machine in here? Who knows? Oh, by the way, if you don't know what a fax machine is, you can Google that as well. Um, complimentary water. It is quite a nice furniture. I do like it. I do like the design in here. It's just the brown. Never a sort of huge fan. That doesn't open. And like all hotels at the moment, they've taken most of the paperwork out of the room. In here is the mini bar. Hi guys, it's a hot day. Uh, which is a fridge, which the fridge is on, nice and cold, so I think I'll get that water in the fridge. Again, another hotel that gives you complimentary water and a fridge. Oh, who's that fella there? Anyone recognise him? He looks rather lonely in that picture, doesn't he? There you go, you can see the size of that, the scale of the room, <laughs> and the scale of uh, Mr McCartney. Got a very pleasant lounge area. Leather armchairs and a big sofa. It's me that moved this chair, it was actually in a respectable position when I came in. <laughs> a really rather massive full length mirror, which you're not going to get me in front of. Anyway, let's go and have a look at the bathroom, which is just off main area. So we've duo vanity sinks, tissues, all our bits. This is a nice looking loo. That's good news. Lovely, spotless. Nice big shower. Not quite wet room size, but it is a big shower. Everything seems to be grabbing me today in the reflection. I'll let you know what that shower's like. Just a, a fairly big Sort of halfway between a normal shower and a rainfall shower. We'll test that out. Bathtub tucked away in the corner. With another shower attachment on it, non slip. Millennium Hotel smellies. So, this is the Hard Days Night Hotel, but it is part of the Millennium Group. All in all, for a four star hotel, we're doing quite well. Right, we have another door. Oh, towel wrap. Not today. I don't think we'll have anything that's got anything coming out here. So what's behind this door? Ah, this leads us to our bedroom. Let's have a look at the bedroom. Well, this big old king size. King size. Yeah. Telephone by the bed. And that's nicely signpost. So we know who we're calling. If we're calling anyone. Side of the bed, the Gideons. Now, what's going on here? That's the front door. Where's Paul and Linda? So, where's Paul and Linda? It's luggage rack, but this isn't the door I came in. And that does lead out into the corridor. Keeping a busy at it. 
So we've got two doors and two control panels. No load of ball and lender. And in fact, we've got a lot more than two control panels because we've got our control panel here and another one on the other side of the bed, which is all very useful. We can put do not disturb on. We can't get below 18 degrees, we've established that. We can mess about with the lights, the huge angle poise, the lamp, and we can switch it all off. So we've got good controls. What we haven't got really is power points, but then again, it's not that far away, is it? And they are USB as well. So I guess most cables would stretch, yeah, they'd stretch the bedside table for your phone, or your iPod, and obviously a laptop cable. Should stretch around there. Have a look on the other side of the bed. And we have a lamp, button, socket, no good to man, no beast. And again, that control panel. In front of us, we have a TV. But though the TV is something far more interesting, we have Paul McCartney, Rupert and the Frog Song. And it's, I'm not sure what it's doing in this box. It doesn't appear to be telling you how to touch it. With one hand, I would try and treat it with as much respect as I can. But yeah, we have an original book. Paul McCartney, Rupert and the Frog Song. There you go. I'll maybe video that properly later when I can use more than one hand because I don't want to damage it. So we'll put that back for a second. Remote, more water, wardrobes. So, I mean, there is plenty of space in here. You know, it's if you were going to be here for a while, you've certainly got the space. And not only have you got a space, you've got a safe place. And that ain't going anywhere. And it's a biggie. So that's going to take, it's going to take a huge laptop. We'll get everything in there. So that is pleasing. Let's have a look in this cupboard. Just more storage. And I guess they've had another fridge there. So more and more hotels I stay in just don't have mini bars anymore. Uh, Probably a good thing. Hair dryer. We've had tea and coffee, but if we spin round, you can see the Nespresso is over there. And we've all our bits and bobs, which is great. Dressing gowns. They look. They look a bit tired, to be honest. They, they look like. I mean, they're, they're clean. They're fluffy. I'm not sure where you go with them though. But there's no. Uh, but anyway, we could always give them an iron. We could always press them. What do you think? And then it's the ironing board. So all we need. Right, let's have a look at this bed. I was just about to say we'll finish off with the bed, but we have one more thing to do after the bed. Well, everything in this room smells fresh, even on a very hot day. And I will be shutting all those curtains in a moment. And our bed is clean and immaculate. Well, it was immaculate until I messed it up. So, there we go. I'm going to attempt to make my bed look tidy. Right, okay, I said we have one more thing to do. Now, we need to look at the view, obviously. And we have a view of Liverpool. So that Ferris wheel, that's over at Albert Dock. And, obviously we're in quite a big corner suite. So if we go back around and we look, again, we've got the Ferris wheel. I will have a go. I'll check the uh, sunrise and sunset. If I get a sun, sunrise or a sunset over there, I think the sunrise is the other side. But that could well be the sunrise. Could be. Anyway... As I said, let's put the camera up so you can't see that I've left my shoes on the desk because I wouldn't want you to see that. We have a balcony. Now you can see how Scorchio it is. So here we go. Say hello to Liverpool. What well, can you see? Well, right in front of you says the light of the building. Side 
somewhere, I'm just trying to get my bearings, is the Cavern Club, which is all kind of just around the corner. 